And now, our feature presentation. I like it spooky. Hey everybody, welcome to I Like It Spooky Horror Podcast. I'm Brian. I am Clint. Happy New Year. And as this being the first episode of 2024 for the I Like It Spooky Horror Podcast, we are haunted by the ghost of podcast past and joined by former co-host Jason as he's going to help us look into 2024 and see what great movies we got coming out. Yeah, finally, the mainstream maverick has come back to the I Like It Spooky Horror <laughs> podcast, and it is good to be here. I'm excited about this. Looking ahead, everything is gotta is got to be good, you know? Nothing bad is going to happen next year. You know, you heard it here. We're going to start talking about horror movies. Everything's going to be great. It's going to be a wonderful year. Jason, I figured after you you saw that we covered the movie Curtains from 1983, you were like, fuck this. I got to get a hold of these guys and get back on the show and get them on the right path. That was the start of it. It was, I was like, oh man, these, <laughs> these guys need help. <laughs> So we're going to start off talking about the first movie coming next year. It, I mean, you've probably already heard about it. You've probably seen the trailers. A movie called Night Swim uh, kicks off the 2024 movie lineup as the first horror movie coming to theaters. It's based on director Bryce McGuire's short film of the same name from 2014. Now, have you guys seen the trailer for this? I have not, no. Leaves a lot to the imagination. It shows like a girl and a guy swimming in a pool. Everything gets dark and you know something malevolent is going to happen. You just don't exactly know what. But I guess they're terrorized by an evil spirit in the swimming pool. They buy a new house and it's got a pool and the kids are playing Marco Polo. The young boy gets out and she's like pissed. And uh, she goes under the water and it gets kind of dark and you see something you don't know what. So this is like in the same vein as like Attack of the Killer Refrigerator, Attack of the Killer Sofa. This is Attack of the Killer Pool. Maybe. I wonder if there's a pool boy. I want to be the pool boy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you don't. I wonder if they're going to go as far to like the whole entire movie is in this freaking pool. You know, I could see them pulling something like that off. I don't know how well received it would be, but I think it would be interesting. It would be unique. I, I, I kind of like the idea. What was that Korean film, The Pool? Did you ever see that one? Mm -hmm. Where the guy's like at the swimming pool and he falls asleep and they drain the pool. So he's stuck in the pool. He's diabetic. He can't eat. He needs his insulin. An alligator gets in the pool somehow. Like it's the whole fucking movie's in the pool. It's actually not a bad movie. Why? The, how the hell did they drain it? <laughs> I have no idea. And it's like an Olympic sized pool. So it's super deep for like diving. So he can't get out of it. Movie magic, I guess. There, there was no shallow end. No, there's a, there's another movie about the two girls that get stuck because the pool closes, you know, like the cover goes on the pool and they can't get out. Oh, the liner. That should have been the name of the movie, the liner. I don't think it was, but. Now, since we started with the first movie coming of the year, we are going to bounce all over. It's, it's not going to be all in chronological order. So I can interrupt at any given moment and say, I'm really looking forward to Cobra Kai season six. As, as normal, interrupt whenever you want. Okay, cool. Go ahead. <laughs> there's something that's got me intrigued just by, there's, there's not even a title to it. It's called, I guess it's not called anything, but it's listed as the Untitled Universal Monster Movie coming out April 19th of 2024. I'm curious, is it like a traditional Universal Monster? If it is, and it's only coming out in four months from now, how the hell do we not know about this? Is that the one that Del Toro's attached to? I don't think so. He wasn't listed. It was uh, the Radio Silent guys. It also stars uh, Melissa Barrera, who will pop up on the list a couple times and not for Scream because, you know, she's not going to be in Scream. And we're not getting Scream this year, as far as I know, because they have to <laughs> redo everything with that movie. It also stars Angus Cloud, who was... I think he's from Euphoria or something, and he died this year. But I guess he, he filmed it. It's done. I, I wonder, though, is it like a traditional Universal remake, or is it just a new monster movie from Universal? We're getting the... Is it the Wolfman that we're getting that just changed lead actors? 
there is a Wolfman coming, but I couldn't really tell if that was actually a universal one or just a standalone werewolf movie called Wolfman, which I think would have some kind of copyright laws, but maybe not from almost 100 years ago. I think that's like they're rebooting, you know, like they did with The Invisible Man. They were wanting to reboot the Universal Monsters with the Wolfman, and then it just, who was it that was supposed to be the main actor, and he stepped away? The blonde guy from Driver. And he stepped away, so they have someone new stepping in, so that's not going to be it, because they're still looking for their lead actor on that one. So maybe they're sneaking something in there. I mean, in a day of everything's always right in your face, you're getting trailers every time you go to the movies for movies, you know, like Night Swim. I've seen that trailer, I feel like, 12 times. It would be fun to get something just snuck in there and be like, here's a movie. This rings a bell because I remember talking about this on some past random past episode of Spill the Guts. As you guys were talking, I just looked up in a, on Deadline. I found a Deadline.com interview. It says, in the vein of is it Unis or Unis, recent films like The Invisible Man and Renfield, this untitled monster thriller provides a unique take on legendary monster lore and will rep a fresh new direction for those classic characters. Plural. So yeah, the, the article is really vague, but I think that snippet maybe gives a little clue into the direction it might be going. Well, I hope it goes other uh, somewhere else than Dracula, because, I mean, you said Renfield, and then we got Last Voyage of the Demeter, which ties into Dracula again. Since I said classic characters, wouldn't it be cool if it was like a, a serious remake of Monster Squad? <laughs> That'd be interesting. <laughs> I don't know if you want to get serious with that movie, though. They could pull it off, though. Monster Squad's just so fun. Instead of the Wolfman's got Nars, it's the Wolfman's got a cock. Do you see that? You know, just adult. <laughs> We're going the triple X rated movie. I didn't say what he what he was doing with it. Just the fact that he had one. Jeez. Let's let's give that to Ty West. I was thinking more along the lines of a uh, oh that that very hairy individual has testicles hanging down that I just kicked. <laughs> Brian's version has freeform jazz playing in the background, cups of tea. <laughs> so since we talked about Universal Monsters, there is a Wolfman coming out, like Brian mentioned. Just a quick synopsis of this. All I have is a man becomes afflicted by an ancient curse after he is bitten by a werewolf, which that's kind of how the story goes. You know, I'm, I'm not the biggest werewolf fan, but, and it kind of goes along with what you just said out. You said, Jason, I hope it's not Dracula or how many renditions, how many reboots, remakes of the Wolfman can we have? You know, how many reboots of these can we have? Or it's just, I'm not interested to see that one. I'll go on record. Yeah. Oh, people keep paying money. They're going to keep making them. Yeah. Give me something different. The Invisible Man was a little different. It kind of updated the story to be current. Um, the Shape of Water was a little different. I mean, The Wolf of Snow Hollow was a werewolf movie, but it was a little different. G give me something that I'm not getting every time you put a werewolf movie out. All right, so you guys called it. You want something completely different? Bring it. I've got it for you. Yeah. You ever heard of Na Nosferatu? <laughs> does, does that ring a bell? Sounds weird. Sounds like one of Brian's foreign films. <laughs> so there's an A24 movie coming out. <laughs> I just said it was an A24 movie, but I, I don't really know if it is. It's a Robert Edgers who did, you know, The Lighthouse. He does some A24 movies. He is redoing Nosferatu. It's coming out sometime in 2024. It's got some big names in it. Uh, of course, Willem Dafoe from The Lighthouse. So it seems like they like to work together. Lily Rose Depp, who is Johnny Depp's daughter. Beautiful. She's in it. The other big one is Bill Skarsgård, which this is kind of going to be the year of Bill Skarsgård because we're going to talk about him again. And he is taking the leading role of Nosferatu. So he was Pennywise, he was Nosferatu, and he's going to be something else also. Yeah, I'm curious if the something else is actually going to happen because the curse follows that series. I think he's going to be a great, a great Nosferatu. Um, I actually liked William Defoe in his portrayal of Nosferatu, and that was actually his portrayal of the actor who played Nosferatu in What We Do, not What We Do in the Shadows. I forget what it was called now, but it was about shadows. It was a great flick. But So what's the other Bill Skarsgård movie you're talking about? The Crow reboot. Yes. Are you excited for it? Do you think it'll happen? I think this is the best shot us Crow fans have had of getting this, but I've gone on record before and I'll say it again. I'm, I'm a fan of his as, an, as far as an actor. I think he'll do great. But there are so many great stories in the Crow universe from comic books to 
novels that I really wish they would start exploring some of those other stories and stop rehashing Eric Draven. You are never going to get a better portrayal of Eric Draven than with, um, why is his name eluding me? Brandon Lee. Um, Brandon Lee. Yeah. I'm like, God, geez, I'm not Bruce Lee. Yeah. You're never going to get a better version of that. So, but I am interested to see. And yeah, as a Crow fan, this, this movie has been years in the making because it's just the curse of the Crow. This might be the year. I'm not a big Crow fan, but I will watch it. This might be the year I watched the Crow because I've never seen it. You've never seen the Crow? No. It's always been on my radar, but it's just kind of floated by. And, you know, I know I've known of the curse and I know that Brandon Lee was, you know, killed on set. And I think if I was Bill Skarsgård's family, I'd be getting some uh, extra life insurance on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, don't watch The Crow with me because watching The Crow with me is probably like watching Halloween with Jason. I will literally <laughs> recite every line of that movie as it's going in live time. You'll, you'll tell me to shut up and go away. I remember seeing The Crow when it originally came out and I was like, uh, okay. And then I watched it again about a year ago and I was still like, eh, okay. <laughs> it's sorry. It's you weren't watching part four with Tara Reed and, um, Edward Furlong, you were watching the original. There's a part four with those two? Oh, God, it's the worst movie I've ever seen. But besides Eli Roth's Cabin Fever, it's such a terrible fucking movie. I have it if you want to borrow it. It's really bad. I didn't know there was a part two, three, or four. (laughs) (laughs) So here's another one to be kind of excited for because... Thinking back to our childhood, family video for us, the rental stores, we would always try to get Faces of Death. For the first time in cinema history, the greatest fear of all mankind will be graphically exposed. Now, a motion picture dares to take you beyond the threshold of the living, where you may discover your own Face of Death. So there is a new Faces of Death, actually called Faces of Death, coming out this year. It's a woman who discovers violent videos that recreate death scenes from movies online. So it's kind of like a found footage online streaming thing. I've been curious how they're going to pull this off because in the world we live in today, you know, back when Faces of Death came out uh, in the late 70s and early 80s and stuff, uh, and even into the 90s when we, you know, kind of stumbled across it in the video stores, the news in the world wasn't what it is today. So you don't need to rent Faces of Death to see that stuff. You can just, you know, click on your local news channel or whatever. So they're going to turn it into more of a fictional story and like a found footage tape thing. It sounds like it doesn't go into it, but kind of like along the realms of VHS, but it says online. So she's fi- finding these online. You know, we really don't have those sites anymore, like the whole the the 4chan and fucking rotten rotten.com and yeah those are those don't exist anymore and i clicked on them every once in a while and i was grossed out and didn't know why i watched them but you know we did it's that morbid curiosity so i feel this is going to be very tame i like how you said you clicked on them every once in a while every once in a while well because then I, it would like kind of get out of my head and i'm like oh let me look at this again no oh, yep <laughs> still still bad <laughs> I, I think with this faces of death, you're you're gonna get people, especially you know fans, people of our age who j- are curious and have to see what they're gonna do with it. But I don't know. I don't think it's. I don't predict it's gonna be that good. But hopefully, I'm wrong. I, it's not gonna be in the theater. I can't. I cannot see that coming to the theater. Like straight to digital something. Do you? Oh, think? I think it's going to the theater. Well, I mean, you look at who's in the movie. It's got Euphoria actress Barbie Ferreira. So I mean, I know that show is like super popular with the kids and then it's got the kid from stranger things that was in the second season that was the heartthrob that was a lifeguard so it's got a young cast of you know popular actors and actresses so i feel like they've thrown some money at it and they're gonna put it in theaters i i will be nervous to see what it's rated if it's pg-13 no thank trash. you trash yeah i don't i don't want anything to do with a movie called faces of death it's pg-13 <laughs> if it's rated r then yeah show i will check it out yeah it's weird how do they do it like do they do these kids stumble across something that we know about and they see this and they start investigating i don't even know like because some of faces of death was real some of it was actual real footage that was pulled from news stations or off of shot on video stuff and some of it was real to a point and then was faked so i don't it'll be interesting to see how they do it maybe they'll get something right that would be nice for a change don't hold your breath 
I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not holding my breath for this one. Yeah, you're right with the rating. It's got to be a rated R, maybe worse, but then that would be rough on ticket sales. All right. Next, we got Nicolas Cage coming back to a horror movie, a new movie called Long Legs. It's about an FBI agent as she attempts to crack unresolved serial killer case that she has a special connection to. Uh, Nicholas play Cage <laughs> will play the serial killer in the movie. I swear I just saw an article recently where he said he's going to step away from acting. Well, this is probably already in the works, so I'm sure he will. If he still has that strange lifestyle where he wants to spend a lot of money. That's a good point to bring up is there's going to be a lot of movies that we're not even for sure of because of the strike being over. There's a lot of movies and television products coming out here 2024 and 2025 that we might not even know about yet. It's about to be flooded. Maybe him stepping away of it from acting is him acting in more movies, more movies like Willy's Wonderland, where he doesn't talk at all. He just shows up, plays pinball. <laughs> I finally watched Spirit Halloween. Was not a fan of the movie. And then I had heard that Five Nights at Freddy was even worse than Spirit Halloween. And so I said, fuck it. And I put on Willy's Wonderland again. And I was like, I love this movie. I love this movie. <laughs> I thought Five Nights at Freddy's was okay. I haven't seen it. Finley liked it. She's five, if that tells you anything. I mean. So going back into remakes, there's a movie coming out called Horror Scope. I think it's a remake of an old 80s movie. I, I vaguely remember seeing like the album or the cover art somewhere. It, does that ring a bell to you guys? I'm looking it up right now, so I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, Jacob Badalon, who was Peter Parker's friend in like all the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, like the funny, I, I don't know if he's Asian. I don't want to assign a race or something or a nationality. We have you back for one fucking show, Jason. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So he takes center stage in a movie about friends who begin to die connected to fortunes of their horoscopes. Wait, is that really how you spell horoscope? Yes. Is it horoscope? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> what? So yeah, it's the word horror and the word scope and they're put together. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it shows how dumb I am. Like, I guess, like horoscope, I'm like, oh, that's a weird word. <laughs> and it's like, I know what it is. Yeah, that's that's why I got kicked off the show. It's I'm dumb. <laughs> so it looks here like the original horoscope at, at a quick search. I'd never heard of it, but it uh, was released in 1994 and is a trilogy of horror stories. So it's an anthology. So I don't know if, if this is going to be an anthology. Wrong this one. Is the wrong one? Okay, there's something different. This is it's actually a remake of a Danish horror film, Speak No Evil. Oh, okay. No, different one. I mean, maybe. <laughs> you know, cuz there's a horror scope and there's also a Speak No Evil coming out, which is a remake of the Danish movie. And the the Speak No Evil has James McAvoy. They're just remaking this one movie and naming it different stuff. Well, fuck, can we get 976 Evil Part 3 then? Something. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's a remake, maybe it's not. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I read what the internet says and I believe it all. <laughs> so yeah, the Speak No Evil, it's a remake of a Danish movie uh, starring James McAvoy. They go on a vacation and it takes a nightmarish turn. I don't know how. I don't. I haven't seen, I don't like watching a lot of foreign films, So if it, especially if they don't speak English. Except for Godzilla this year. That was pretty damn good, watching all the subtitles. We had talked about this, Clanton, a little bit, Jason, that we're stuck in this remake reimagining reboot of everything hopefully after this strikes over and we get going again we'll start getting new stuff oh we can hope all right speaking of another remake another reboot remake which board it's a remake of the 1984 movie i put 1984 remake and then on another one i put 1986 so mid 80s remake of Witchboard. Another one I don't know anything about. Uh, it's about a woman and her connection to an ancient coven of witches puts her life in danger through the discovery of a pendulum board. I don't, I don't, what's a pendulum board? I don't know what that is either. Witchboard was directed by, uh, I always, I can't remember if it was Dennis Tenney or Michael S. Tenney, their brothers. I can't remember which one did the, directed and did the, the score, but directed Night of the Demons. And of course, the original Witchboard starred Tawny Katain, which if no one knows that name of Tawny Katain was the beautiful kind of playmate type centerfold model from the 80s that was draped all over the car in the White Snake video and in a bunch of other stuff too. I know her. <laughs> <laughs> She's on your wall right next to Samantha Fox. Yeah. 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 
So this remake is coming from director Chuck Russell, who did Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, and The Blob. Pretty good lineage right there. Yeah, that just that alone has my interest because the original was a, a sleeper. It was very soap opera horror. I saw it a couple times, but just was, uh, but that's very interesting. You know what else is interesting is, Jason, I'm very proud of you because I'm sure you might get to some, but nothing you've brought up so far has been that mainstream. You introduced yourself as the mainstream maverick, and then Witchboard was the most mainstream thing you've mentioned. I'm trying to kind of space them out here so we have a little fun with it. You know, I don't I don't want to give you all good shit up front, and then we get all the, the lame stuff later. So, speaking of mainstream, you want mainstream? You got mainstream that I have very little on. Saw 11. That's all I got. Saw 11's coming out. <laughs> I got no, I don't know. I just announced it's coming out next October. Yep. Next October. Yep. Saw 11. That's how easy it is to make a Saw movie now. They can just, yeah, we're just going to pump one out every six months. Well, they did that in the beginning. Wasn't it for the first, what, five or six years? I wonder if they're going to get back into that. And just for every year now, we're going to get another Saw movie until until they kind of run the well dry and then they'll go away for a while and come back and do it again. I thought the last Saw movie was pretty good. Are the Saw movies getting to be like Witchboard? Because, you know, I bought Witchboard 7 on VHS for a quarter. Are they getting to be like those in 20 years? Are people going to be like, oh, I remember seeing Saul 14. It was so awful. And I love it. And I have it on VHS, you know, Blu-ray in the box set. You know, I would like to see a franchise reach that high number, though. Kind of like I, I brought up uh, Monster Squad earlier. I remember that movie the kid was watching from his roof, and I forget, it was like Unmasked Slaughter Massacre Part 72 or something. It yeah. was, you know, <laughs> like it would just be so cool to have a horror franchise really be like Saw 29. This time it's for real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, a uh, movie called Adrift. Uh, it's coming out this year. Darren Aronofsky's directing it, and uh, Jared Leto is tied to it. I don't know if he's co-directing it or he's starring in it also. So Darren Aronofsky is from like the last A24 movie, The Whale. That was pretty damn good. But Black Swan, Mother, Requiem for a Dream, all kind of those weird movies in my mind. So now I'm nervous to see what this is about. Uh, it's described as a supernatural ghost story set aboard a ship. It's an adaption from a short story, and it's going to be produced by Blumhouse. I like Blumhouse, but they pretty much take anything now. And I like Jared Leto, but that, yeah, that Darren Aronofsky, he's got a following, I'm sure, but I don't know much about this one. That's what I think is interesting about everything you've brought up so far, Jason, is all of the projects have at least one, if not more, really big names or staff established players attached to them. Do you think this is a kind of a, because horror and independent film kept Hollywood afloat last year or kept movies afloat, do you feel like this is kind of some people a reward for them? Here's a reward for maybe not a reward, but Hollywood's like, wow, when we couldn't do anything, all these independent horror films and directors and people were still putting stuff out that kept things afloat. I don't think it's a reward. I think this is just a flat out byproduct of the strike. And it's like when we uh, interviewed Sylvia Kaminer and she was like, during the strike, all these writers are going to be writing for themselves and writing their own stories. Now, granted, a lot of these that Jason's bringing up are remakes or reboots or Nosferatu is not original, but it's not that current mainstream big budget blockbuster property. So they were like, okay, I finally get time to to make this because I'm not making, you know, uh, Halloween third or 14. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's a byproduct. I think all the stuff that he's talking about is just flat out a byproduct of the studios have their hands tied and not being able to do anything. Well, it said that it's the year of Bill Skarsgård, but I've also heard a couple of times that these are adaptions from short films. I like when they take those original, most of the time, ideas and make it into movies because those are the shorts that you want to see. Those are, you know, the shorts you go to Snake Alley Festival film or Halloween Palooza or the Joe Bob Jamboree and you see a short and you're like, that needs to be a movie. I want more of that. It's also kind of like uh, the last episode of Indie Spotlight when we were talking with Leah and I had mentioned or someone had mentioned that where do the studios go when their well has run dry? They go to the world of Indie for inspiration. And again, that kind of sounds like what's going on here until Jason announces that there is going to be a Halloween 14. Although I'm sure there's a Halloween television series in there somewhere. 
I didn't include any television, anything, because everything is still such speculation. Maybe I'll come back with breaking news mid-year. <laughs> and we'll get something big Halloween coming out. Yeah, it is. I do have a few in here that will hopefully be new stories. Not guaranteeing it because there's a couple things that aren't remakes or I don't think are remakes, hopefully. We'll talk about those a little bit. But, you know, I got a lot more remakes and sequels to talk about still. We'll get to some more of those. Uh, Return to Silent Hill. It's coming out in April. Not a big Silent Hill fan. The video games were okay. That's funny. I'm I'm opposite. I hated the video games, but I love the movies. The Return to Silent Hill follows James Sunderland returning to the town to search of his lost love after receiving a mysterious letter. So I guess he's going back in trying to find whoever. I don't really know the plots to the movies if it was maybe somebody from one of the first movies or I know it has like the creepy ass girl in it. I always got the impression that the uh, the protagonist storylines in those were all separate and just the only thing that tied everything together was the town. Well, we'll find out. I'll still watch this movie. I won't go to the theater to watch it unless the trailer looks amazing. Well, the trailers always look amazing. Well, yeah. All right. Next up, we got a Halle Berry movie coming out. Oof. Halle Berry. That's, that's an old childhood crush and adult crush and... Older adult, middle-aged crush. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> uh, she's coming out to a new movie called Never Let Go. Halle Berry headlines a movie about a family who has been tormented by an evil spirit for years as their lives become more dangerous when one of the kids questions if the evil is real. So I guess one of the badass kids is talking shit about this demon, and the demon's like, I'm going to show you what's up. I wonder if she's the demon. Is she the demon in the movie? Maybe. Have to find out. There's uh, no date for it, just sometime in 2024. There should be a remake of The Wizard of Oz where Holly Berry plays Dorothy and Christmas Mariah Carey plays the Wicked Witch of the West. (laughs) There you go. Kind of a fresh idea. That's in 2025. (laughs) Get started on it. You got time for another project, don't you? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) No, not at all. So here's one of the hopefully original stories, like him or not, but Jordan Peele makes good movies. I'm not always a fan of him, but it seems like a lot of people are. There is an unnamed Jordan Peele Universal Studios movie coming out uh, later this year. I, I have it written down as Christmas Day release of next year. So with Nope last year, it was under wraps until kind of close to the end and not last year. When was Nope? 2022 2021 i think it was late 2022 yeah it was a good movie though and jordan peele i'm curious to see what happens but yeah we probably won't get any more news on that until summer fall of next year he's kind of like m night Shyamalan to me some of his stuff i like some of it i just what did i just watch but it seems like there's a consensus people love him though and it's kind of cool this day and age to have a director where it's just like, hey, new Jordan Peele horror movie. Like, oh, I'm listening. You know, don't have much to tell you now, but there's there's something else coming. Well, and it's original. His stuff tends to be on the original side. I mean, another alien movie coming out, supposed to come out in August of next year or this year, if you're listening, I guess now. Alien <laughs> Romulus. <laughs> <laughs> new movie by Fetty Alvarez, who I think he just did. He did the new Texas Chainsaw one, right? Maybe he didn't. I don't know. He's a big name. The seventh installment in the live action franchise takes place in the same universe as the other movies, but is not directly connected uh, to them through returning characters. So it's another alien movie, but in its own story. That makes sense. Why have they not blown the universal doors off that wide open? Because, yeah, it's you're in space. It's a universe. That, that stuff was happening all over the place. Halfway there. They're on seven, huh? Does that include, like, all the Alien vs. Predator movies, too? Or are they just on seven from, like... I, th- I think they're just on seven from the straight up... So they're like 10 now then, huh? Alien vs. Predator, there was a couple of those. Hot damn. Maybe they'll get there first. (laughs) There's that double feature for you. Saw 29. And the next movie, Alien 32. (laughs) Return to the home planet. We'll show that to Orpheum when I'm like 75. (laughs) The mainstream maverick here is going to talk about a very mainstream horror movie now that I'm very excited for. Don't know much about it again, but we have a little info. This is the time for me to run and get my pop. The Conjuring, The Last Rites, to be determined sometime this year, hopefully sometime this year. But Brian, did you see The Nun 2? 
No, I haven't seen that one yet. And The Nun's one of the series that I actually like. I like the offshoots almost more than the original movies. I mean, it's like it or not, it's created its own universe with Annabelle and The Nun and just the standalone Conjuring movies. Uh, the Conjuring Last Rites. If you have seen The Nun, or if you haven't, stay for the after credits. And it kind of introduces a new movie coming. It says that the story will continue. What about you, Clint? Did you see The Nun too? I did not. I enjoyed the first Nun. I just haven't gotten around to seeing the second one. It was a good movie. Um, I like The Nun. I like the first Nun. I like the second one. Very creepy. But yeah, like I was saying, though, watch the after credits and it kind of ties it. So it has the sisters, the Farminga sisters, which the one sister is the main. What's the family in The Conjuring? The the ghost hunter people? Oh, Ed and Lorraine. Um... Ed, War, the Warrens. So one sister plays the the uh, Elaine Warren. And then the other sister is the nun in the nun. That's not the scary nun, <laughs> the, the young student nun. That, But it looks like they're going to come together in a movie together, which they are together, but they I don't think they've never been on screen together. So I think they're going to kind of tie the two series together with, I mean, it's even called The Last Rites, but it is like The Conjuring. So a Conjuring movie is tied to religion with the nun, hopefully. Showing up. That's one of the top ones I'm really excited for. Are you not a fan of the Conjuring series, Clint? It's not that I'm not. And Yeah, it's it's not my go-to. I've seen them. I enjoyed them. But I wasn't like, oh my God, I got to see the next one, you know. Now, Wednesday season two. If that comes out this year, I'm excited about that. I bet that'll still be like next year because they probably they couldn't have been filming. They couldn't have been writing unless they were doing it, you know, while the current season was going. We'll find out. Have you heard? Is it coming out this year? No. I Again, I didn't do any research for this episode. I'm a bum. I'm a bum. I don't know. I just know that, you know, with the, with the strike over, I don't know what's coming. And I know that that will be coming. So if it's not this year, it's 2025. But. Was Scream planned to be this year, the new Scream? Scream was planned to be in 2024, yeah, but now who knows? Well, and that's why they couldn't have uh, what's-her-name in Scream, because she was filming Wednesday. Jenna Ortega. Yeah, Jenna Ortega couldn't be in the new Scream movie because she was doing Wednesday Season 2. Good point. I mean, I think if Netflix is smart, they push as hard as they can to get this out. I mean, the movie's hot. It was one of the biggest... Costumes for Halloween. Every other little kid was Wednesday Adams. You got to get this out. I dressed up as Wednesday Adams for Halloween this year. I just didn't show anybody those photos. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something you guys are going to be excited for. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Now, did you guys watch the first one? Nope. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> did you? What kind of? Yeah, I did. <laughs> was it good? I, I, no. <laughs> Oh, no. I watch it. <laughs> I had to I had to watch it. it. It was on Hulu or something. All right, I'm going to watch this. And we started watching it and we're like it it was interesting just seeing Pooh like that. Like in the first one Christopher Robin like left and like went to medical school or something. So he left Pooh and Piglet and they got pissed and they started killing people. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but we were missing some characters. But now I guess with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, that's a mouthful, coming out this year, it's going to have Tigger and Al in it, who weren't in the first one. So I'm excited. I heard Tigger was coming, and I didn't know if Tigger was going to be in part two or if Tigger was going to get his own movie. Was Eeyore in the original one? No, Eeyore was... There was something about Eeyore in it, but I don't remember that he was in it. I think he was dead. I think they killed an eight Eeyore. <laughs> I could be completely oh. wrong. <laughs> I, I, if not, go back and, you know, make that to where they do. But yeah. Christ, now I got to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you kind of fast forward a little bit through it, just to kind of get to like, you, you could still get the story through most of it. So it's like Terrifier 2. Right. That was good, though, just because it was Terrifier. You got Terrifier 3 on your list, right? Now that you mentioned it, let's talk about it. Terrifier 3. October 25th, it's coming out. Looks like it's going to be a Christmas movie. The trailer showed it as a Christmas movie. I don't know how much they're going to go into it to make it like a full Christmas movie or if it's just going to be part of it. So what have you guys heard about it? 
just that it's going to be a Christmas movie. I don't know if it's full-fledged Christmas movie or if it just takes place during Christmas like Die Hard or if it's Art the Clown killing Santa Claus. I don't know. We, we talked about it. I don't I don't want to say at length, but we talked about it quite a bit in some of the past episodes. And I was actually kind of disappointed because I wanted, me personally, I wanted to see Terrifier go back to the, the direction of the first movie where it was more dark and more direct. And then part two, I thought was had too much story and got a little fantasy and a little weird. I had heard that the third one was going to go back to that more dark, direct nature of Art the Clown. But then we get the trailer where he's you know dressed as Santa. Interested to see what they do with it. I think they could still go back to the original dark, disturbing Art the Clown. Just have him dressed as Santa. Have the beautiful lighting, you know, like the reds and the greens and the blues as a Christmas movie. But fuck, have him go into a house and kill a little kid and at Christmas time. Like, make it more like the original. I don't need him acting goofy the whole time. Just make it where he's dressed as Santa and he's insane, and he's going to town on everybody, ruining people's Christmas. If they went that direction, Brian, it'd be cool if they had little Easter egg nods to Black Christmas and Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Christmas Evil, and hell, even um, New Year's Evil, you know? That'd be fun. Maybe they won't show it on screen, but they'll walk by, and they'll have like a deer head on the wall with like Linnea Quigley hanging on it. Yeah, 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 seriously, something like that. They don't, they don't show it, but he just like walks by, and you see it real quick. That'd be great. A bunch of cool Iris Toys Inc. mirrors, you know, merchandise in the background. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, you should send a bunch to Damian Leone. Just be like, here, if you need these for the, the shoot, only at inkmirrors.com. Just say my fucking name. <laughs> they Follow, which is a sequel to It Follows, which was fantastic. I loved, I'm a big fan of It Follows. David Robert Mitchell is coming back to direct it. I'm sure it's probably going to be kind of like the same story but now it's they follow are there multiple of these you saw it follows right clint no i i never did watch it but i do remember you talking about it and i remember you saying after you watched it that that tanya sent you to mcdonald's yep and you were freaking out you said you were like in the parking lot going oh my god why is that person looking at me what's going on i just wanted some fries ah <laughs> i was it it truly spooked me but yeah the sequel's coming out for that one great movie loved it now you got to watch both of them clint all right let's see what do you what do you say brian what do you say about that one i mean if it's anywhere as good as the original then hell yes that's one of those I don't get creeped out much, but I watch this movie and I'm creeped out because you don't know what is coming. I mean, Halloween, you know, it's it's Michael and Friday, you know, it's Jason. This you don't know what it is. And not everybody sees the danger. You don't really get an explanation of why or what or any of that. So amazing soundtrack, too. I'm interested. Salem's Lot reboot of Salem's Lot coming this year. I hope they make it shorter. What? What? We have been talking about Salem's Lot since I came on this show, and we still haven't seen it. And uh, of course, the last the last I reported about it on Spill the Guts was that it's now going to HBO Max, and the reason was was because of the strike, and they needed you know content, and so they pulled it from theaters, and they're they're going to put it on there. That to me, it's in the same vein of The Crow. I'll believe it when I see it. I've heard so much about it. The last line of this article says 2024 could finally be the time the movie is released. Question mark, exclamation point. I know we've talked about it and how long it is. And this one I'm kind of curious about, uh, the Strangers Trilogy. So a new Strangers movie and they're making it a trilogy. Uh, a couple places I looked, they had all three of them coming out at one time, coming out this year. So I don't know if it's going to be, there's three of them coming out, but I don't, yeah, I don't know how they're going to space them out, but it's just new Strangers. Um, how and where each installment of the new uh, trilogy will be released is unknown at this time. So it's coming from uh, director Rennie Harlan, who has an experience with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Exorcist Beginning. I don't know. I'm a big Strangers fan, so I'm kind of curious to see what they do with this. And at first, when I first read it, I thought it was like a trilogy, like it was going to be three different stories wrapped into one. But now it seems like it's just traditional trilogy, like three at separate times. Kind of repeating myself from earlier, but it's it's a project that you're bringing up that's a little little obscure, a little off the beaten path, not really mainstream, but it's got a big name attached to it. Are we seeing a, a re, not really a reimagining, but uh, these guys from the 80s that did all these movies in the 80s and 90s that were successful horror movies that have a following now are coming back and getting invited back in a 
you know, making movies again. Or maybe they never went away. I don't really know. The name Rennie Harlan, it rings a bell. I couldn't really name any other stuff that they've done. I know he recently worked on a project. It was something about a plane and it went down in shark infested waters. But there was another element to that movie. I can't remember what it was. And I don't even know if that's out yet. And I can't think of the title. Was that the one with the he was working on with Gene Simmons from Kiss? Yes. Yep. There's a new uh, Insidious movie, but it's a, a spinoff of the Insidious movie. It's called Thread, an Insidious Tale. Seems interesting. It's got some names that uh, Kumal Nanjiani, he's uh, from The Big Sick. He's a comedian. You've seen him in a lot of stuff. Silicon Valley. I don't know if you watch that. And Mandy Moore the old singer who's an actress now. They play husband and wife who use a spell to travel back in time to prevent their daughter's death, which was wor- which has worse consequences than they imagined. It's kind of interesting. Sounds like a new story, but tied to the whole Insidious thing. I don't know why it's tied to Insidious if it's a new movie or a another tale because unless we know some of these people yeah they'll possibly come across some of the characters from the insidious universe or use the doors somehow you know to travel yeah maybe that's how they do it too maybe that's how it's tied any word on that clint no man i'm waiting for you to and this isn't this is a fault of yours it's just a fault of what's coming out is I'm just sitting here waiting for, oh my God, that, you know what I mean? Like everything we've talked about so far, I'm just kind of like, yeah, well, the... so I'm going to go to one. Fuck it. I'm going to bring some of my own excitement into this. And there's a lot that I don't know that's coming out in 2024, but this one I know is coming out. It's probably only going to interest Brian and myself and a handful of other people. But one of the projects I am most excited to see in 2024 is a fan film and it's, it's me, Billy too. I cannot wait to see. I loved It's Me, Billy. It's the best fan film I've ever seen. And part two is either just wrapped production or still in production. They actually had a cast change, unfortunately, during production of a major character. It's Me, Billy 2, 2024. Can't wait to see it. Before I talk about that one, who's the guy who's doing it? The same guy as before? The same guy, Dave McRae. And he is the guy who played Freddy in the new Nightmare, Dylan's Dylan's Nightmare fan film. I did not watch It's Me, Billy 1, or the first one. But I need to watch it because I know it's a Black Christmas fan film. So I need to watch that. I got to get those both watched here. Wait, when's that one come out? Oh, next year, you're saying? Well, we are we are into next year. This is time travel. <laughs> This is this is currently 2024. Dumb again. I I was excited. I thought I was going to get to watch it now, but I forgot we're doing a a show about the future in the past. But it's the <laughs> present for us. <laughs> I think Marley's coming down the stairs with with the ghost of Christmas past, which was a few minutes ago when I forgot we're talking about the present or the future. <laughs> But now it's never mind. I just want to talk about It's Me, Billy, too. And now I'm so confused. What about Ty West and his X trilogy so far? So we've had X, we've had Pearl, and now we're getting Maxine. That's another one I'm excited for. Now in the 80s, Los Angeles, porn. It's got some big names coming with it, too. You know, of course, uh, Mia Goth, Ty West, Giancarlo Esposito, who was uh, from Breaking Bad and Star Wars Mandalorian and a lot of stuff. Kevin Bacon is going to be in this one. And uh, the singer Halsey. Pretty good names. I want to kind of see where Kevin Bacon and Giancarlo Esposito fit. I said you had me at porn. Oh, <laughs> You know, porn. They were watching right. that in the past. Yeah. In the oh, future. yeah. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> I almost wish, though, they would have went to New York in the 80s, not L.A. I think New York 80s would have been. I mean, but maybe we haven't had enough L.A. in the 80s. Maybe we need more of that. Yeah. I'm interested to see that. I only knew Galesburg, Illinois in the 80s, and it was, it was <laughs> probably not comparable. All right, a couple other uh, bigger ones. A Quiet Place, day one. So we're going back. It's going to be a prequel with a new group of actors starring uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Stranger Things' Joseph Quinn. So they're kind of piggybacking off the second Quiet Place, how it opened? Yeah, how it opened. That was day one, but I guess this is... So I don't... It doesn't say anything about John Kaczynski or anything being in it. That wouldn't be exciting. So, you know, uh, Beck and Woods, who are guys from around here where we live, they also have a movie coming out, and they're tied to Quiet Place because they helped write the original one. Um, Heretic is coming out. This kind of seems exciting. Hopefully this is an original movie. It's going to set it's set to star Yellow Jacket Sophie Thatcher and the Fablemans Chloe East as two girls with Hugh Grant playing a creepy older man. 
A24 has yet to release any information about it, but it's an A24 movie. Uh, the film began filming in the summer of 23, but it was disrupted by the SAG strike. Now, I don't hobnob with a lot of people, but we were at the opening of, you know, Beck and Woods' new theater. Brian Woods was standing over there with his wife alone. When we got there early, I had a drink in my hand. I walked over, started talking to him. His wife mentioned that they just finished their new project. And dumb me was like so wrapped up into talking about the theater, I didn't even ask about it. So I could have got some insight right there. I'm sure we'll run into them again, but it's exciting that they have a new movie coming out and we got the theater or in our hometown here or did you know much about that one brian i've heard that they have really really cool sleek cup holders there the cup holders there to fucking die for yeah they they held my cup great my theater did i don't know about jason's why what was yours i got the little theater yeah i had the big theater oh were the seats different was it cup holders different what's i don't know i've never been in the little theater to have a drink (laughs) (laughs) you were in there talking to that guy that one day Oh well, yeah, but I didn't set my drink down. It's a cool theater. I don't. The cup holders held my cup just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was good with it. All right, here, father and daughter. We got to talk about this. Two big movies coming out. Um, we'll talk about father first. M Night Shyamalan new movie called Trap coming out. There is little confirmed about what Trap will be about, other than it's a tease on more of a psychological thriller set at a concert. Kind of reminds me of The Collector when I read that, like how it started and they were at like, or that was Collector 2, they were at like a rave and then they got trapped in there. Kind of curious, but it's M. Night Shyamalan. Clint said earlier, you know, you know, sometimes you're a fan, sometimes you're not. And his are movies where it's kind of hush hush also for those. You'll get the surprise ending, change at the end, you know, the curveball they throw you. His daughter also has a movie coming out this year. So I guess she's taken after her dad and directing movies. It's called The Watchers. It's coming out in June. Ishana Night Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. The Watchers has uh, Dakota Fanning, who is a great child actor still, you know, an actor as she gets older. A young artist who becomes trapped in the woods with three strangers as mysterious creatures stalk them. Yeah, that's coming out in June, so we don't have to wait too long, about six months for that. That'll kind of blow by. I'm kind of curious, like, how she's going to take after her dad. You know, are her, is she going to have, like, the big twist? Does he, has he helped out with this? Not that he needs to. I'm sure she can do fine on her own, but curious to see that one. Have you heard anything about that one? I stumbled across it because her name is connected to her father's name, and it'd be interesting to see if she has a different style than he does. You got to give me something a little different. All right, two more quick ones to go over here. Uh, Smile 2, the sequel to Smile is coming out. Not much about that. We do know it's supposedly supposed to be coming. I love the campaign on that where people were just popping up for the original, just at baseball games and stuff, just smiling at the camera. Uh, new movie coming out in February, so we don't have much time to wait. I just saw the trailer to this at the Godzilla, I think, Imaginary. It's about a girl and her mom move back into their childhood home, and she had an imaginary friend who was a teddy bear, and it got creepy because the teddy bear was mad that the mom had left now friends with the daughter, but it's very malevolent. Have you seen that, Clint, the trailer at all to that? So that's another one we don't have to wait long for. Yeah, when we went and seen Godzilla Minus One, Finley covered her eyes like the whole trailer for that one. She's like, "Mm mm-mm, with poo, blood, and honey, and now imaginary, if you have a stuffed bear in your life, just take it with you wherever you go. Don't leave it, because it's going to come and fuck your life up when you get back. (laughs) That was funny. When we were walking out of the theater, my wife asked Finley, she was like, oh, did you like that movie? She said, I didn't like the teddy bear. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's all she remembered that was so cute two hour godzilla movie and all she remembered was that damn teddy bear at the beginning we can't go an episode of the i like it spooky horror podcast without talking about a horror comedy because that's all you guys do right or you know when i was there a new movie coming out called lisa frankenstein it's listed as a horror comedy is she's a teenager in the late 1980s who gives a corpse who's played by cole sprouse He's a big child actor, adult actor now. He Zach and Cody, whatever. My daughter's a huge fan. She loves Cole Sprouse. I'll have to tell her this. She gives him the Frankenstein treatment and makes him into her boyfriend. Things get more gory from there. 
So that's kind of fun. It's probably like a, you know, a teenager type style movie and a new play on Frankenstein where it's, it's a girl just creating a love. This is another one I'll be interested to see what it's rated. It's rated PG-13. It's a teeny bopper movie. Yeah. If it's rated R, then it may be right up our alley. You know, it's in the 80s. It's a Frankenstein. She's murdering everybody and like talking him into helping. So it'll be interesting to see what this one gets rated. So I've got left on my list just the two, you know, probably biggest mainstream movies coming out this year. Beetlejuice 2. Luckily, it started filming. I think it wrapped filming right before the strike happened. I saw people go into that town in Vermont, and they had the house all built up there, and they've since torn it down. So I think that they're done with filming. But it's the 30-year sequel to, of course, Beetlejuice 1. Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder are returning. Jenna Ortega is in it. Also, Catherine O'Hara is coming back. She was the mom in it. And uh, Willem Dafoe is going to be in it, but no Alec Baldwin or Gina Davis. Bringing back some of the original cast, leaving out some of the other cast. Super excited for this one. I hope they do it justice. It's been a long time coming. I think they will. I mean, especially since it's the same director, I think they're going to do And I, I like how they brought Jenna Ortega on to kind of add some young blood, some new life to an old story. And almost kind of like they did with uh, Hocus Pocus 2, which you know, went right to Disney+, Plus, which I was... I didn't hate, but I wasn't really a big fan of. It was great to see these existing characters, and then they bring this kind of fresh young blood into it to create the possibilities to carry the franchise further and in different directions. And I think they might do that with this. This is actually, out of all the movies you've talked about so far and brought to us here, Jason, this is probably the one I'm, besides It's Me, Billy, too, that I'm uh, most excited to see. Like, I will go to the theater to see this. I can't wait. Yeah, I, when I read No Alec Baldwin or Gina Davis, I was kind of sad because I kind of pictured, you know, maybe Jenna Ortega playing Winona Ryder's daughter and coming back to the house and meeting the spirits that, you know, she hung out with, you know, when she was younger. But no, they're not there. That's coming out September 26th so far, unless they move it up. But as of right now. The last one I have on my list here, we finally got a trailer for it. The new Ghostbusters Afterlife 2. We even got a name, Frozen Empire. Yes, that one I am very excited. I'm actually, I would go see that over the Beetlejuice one just because we talked about it a little bit on one of the past episodes here recently, but it looks like they're taking Ghostbusters into a dark and scary direction as opposed to the normal whims whimsy, which is great. I mean, but uh, the whimsy is perfect, but I, I'm interested to see it dark and spooky. Yeah, it looks like it's supposed to be modern times, but that trailer really scream. 80s it seemed like the wheel and the beat i don't know it just it seemed 80s-esque and well and it was dark i mean the villain i guess you want to call it in the movie you know this like 13 foot tall black shadowy creature that freezes you to death and the last thing you see is your teardrop before you die i mean that's a far cry from slimer busting through the wall and eating your cheeseburger you know it just spikes of ice coming up through the ground and impaling people and someone made the joke of like oh it looks like they pissed off elsa from frozen i'm, I'm excited to see this movie as well so clint's pushing for an r-rated ghostbusters i am <laughs> I, I doubt it'll happen but you know it'll be fun it's the spangler family so the one from afterlife one who lived on the farm in egon's family they come back to new york and we kind of knew the firehouse was going to be in it. And I've seen some YouTube videos where they have been filming it, where they have the, you know, Ecto-1. Yeah, I'm excited just to see what's coming out. I'm excited for franchises to do stuff with this. Something fun, like Baskin Robbins did like the last one where they had a special ice cream thing. and Oh, it's going to be Ghostbusters fucking everything. It will be. Hold on to your wallet, especially if Spirit Halloween this coming October. But yeah, it's going to be <laughs> Ghostbusters everything. They actually already have. They uh, There's a whole bunch of Ghostbusters scratch-off tickets out floating around right now. One quick honorable non-horror mention. There's probably a bunch of them. What about Twisters, the new Twister sequel? I'm a tornado nut. I'm excited for it. but I was a fan of the first movie. I've seen it quite a few times. I like it. I'll check it out. Is Helen Hunt going to be in it? I don't know. I just, I was like, I didn't, I didn't think we'd talk in depth about it, but I'm just excited it's coming out. Finally, a sequel. Oh, if you live in Iowa or the Midwest, Twisters is a horror fucking movie. No, exactly. Yeah. It's not a costume. It's a way of life. Yeah. <laughs> so I did find some TV shows. 
for next year. A lot of them are to be determined. I think the strike really put a wrench in so many things. One of my hopes is that the strike did not put a wrench in some stuff that is off the beaten path like we talked about last year and some foreign stuff, hopefully. Um, you know, we got the sadness last year that was fun and we got Dark Harvest fun. that was probably one of my fun. favorite. Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I enjoyed it. All right. You know, we got Dark Harvest last year. That was probably one of my favorite movies of last year, and it was not a mainstream movie. I like Dark Harvest a lot. We get American Horror Story Delicate Part 2 from FX. I'm not sure anybody's watching that at this point, but... I have not heard good things about Delicate. I have not watched it yet. Um, We get Welcome to Dairy Season 1 on HBO Max, or Max, whatever it's called, which will be fun. There's an Alien Season 1 on Hulu that's to be determined, so not sure if that'll come out this year or next year. Um, Chucky Season 3 on Sci-Fi in USA Part 2. They're doing that a lot. I don't watch a lot of TV, but are they splitting stuff up nowadays? Yes. Um, there's a Conjuring TV show spinoff on uh, Max that's in the works. And of course, Crystal Lake Season 1 on Peacock. Not sure when that's going to come, but I think we're all excited for that to see what they do with that story. I will renew my Peacock subscription for that one. Peacock again, Hysteria, talks about the, you know, the 80s and the satanic panic. Interview with a Vampire Season 2 on AMC. The Last of Us Season 2 on HBO. Did you guys see Interview with a Vampire, the first season? No. Pretty good. I was, in, I was into it. And then Stranger Things again will be back. The Wicker Man Season 1, not sure where that's going to be. But yeah, a lot of horror stuff that's kind of swimming around in the pool. You left out, and I know there's not as many as there used to be Walking Dead fans, but in February, so in about a month from when you're hearing this, the Rick and Michonne spinoff series is coming out. I think it's towards the end of February, and it's called The Ones Who Live, or We Are The Ones Who Live, or whatever. So we finally get to see what happened to Rick after he disappeared in, uh, what was that, the end of season eight, I think, or something like that. I watched the first couple seasons. I got kind of lost. My sister still watches all of The Walking Dead religiously. I would love to see them return to more of the roots and get back to what the show originally was. And it, I mean, is this the year that we get something from Trick or Treat? I mean, does Sam return anytime soon? No, I think Michael Doherty has too much fun doing his annual Halloween teasers from the Michael Myers house. <laughs> yeah, I saw a little something about that, but I was like, I'm not getting my hopes up. It's, <laughs> it's, I haven't heard shit about it yet. I think this year, if I'm being realistic is not going to be a good year for horror movies. I just feel like the strike did a lot of damage next year. We're going to get stuff that we're going to put on our shelves and keep forever because they will be classic films. I agree. So Jason brought up a pretty you know comprehensive list. I know with this stuff, he enjoys doing this. So I'm sure it was thorough. I'm sure there are maybe a couple things that he missed possibly. And there's stuff that we don't know about yet. It's still pretty early. But with that said, listening to everything that was brought forth this episode, I'm really glad that this is the year that I'm choosing to try to balance my personal life with all the things that I do. Because I feel that I'm not going to be missing out on a whole lot. It just doesn't seem like there's, it's going to make it easier for me. Yeah, there's not a whole lot a lot going on that I'm excited. Yeah, you could tell they kind of sprinkled in like the big releases. There's a couple bigger releases and then it's kind of eh. But at least, you know, we do have Ghostbusters. We do have Beetlejuice. Those are two huge, iconic franchises. I do think that 2025 is going to be on fire, though. Just for example, this is just one title. I know this is a film that all three of us thoroughly enjoyed, but they recently announced that the Black Phone 2 is going to be in production. The Grabber is coming back. The original characters are coming back. I don't think that's going to get a 2024 release. I don't know much, you know, many of the details. But that's just one example of many. Like you say, Brian, I think the aftermath of the strike, I think 2025 is going to be just go time. And I didn't even think the one thing that I'm probably most excited to see, not because it's going to be good, it's the marvel of, you know, God. Godzilla movies, but there's a new Godzilla versus Kong or Godzilla with Kong or and the trailer looks ridiculous, but it's looks like it'll be fun. I'm not counting on it being a great movie, but Finley and I'll go and we'll have a blast. I'm not excited for this year, but like you said, maybe I can catch up on some older stuff. And there will be movies that sneak through that are independents that I catch. And I'm like, that was better than 99% of what Hollywood put out. I'm glad I caught that one. <laughs> 
And probably in 2025, with the success of Godzilla Minus One, I can't imagine they push off another Godzilla movie very long from Japan. Toho's got to be thinking and working on something else. Because that's a originally was three movies. It was Shin Godzilla, Godzilla Minus One, and another movie. Strike while the iron is hot. You know something I am looking forward to in 2024? What's that? All of the great content that our podcast network brings to us. The PFPN. Let's hear from them. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. All right. Well, thanks for having me on again, guys. This was fun. I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah, what the fuck were we thinking? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Look, once a year, you know. I guess we'll find out next year if you guys have me back. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. What did I write in my notes? Um, questionable if we will have Jason back for the next one. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, you're up to date. Yeah, this is one of the funnest ones I think we do all year and gives us an idea of what to look forward to because last year we talked about Dark Harvest. Again, I'm going to say Dark Harvest, but we talked about it and then I it was on my radar all year to check it out when it came out. I spent about an hour last night looking at what was coming out. I didn't find anything that you didn't talk about, which is weird. It's The well's kind of dry this year. So when you guys talked about having me back on, I think you guys kind of approached me maybe September. I started looking right then and I got, I nailed a little list together and then I'm like, I need to wait until closer to the end of the year and kind of do some more research and see. And, you know, I got a little bit more information. I mean, it's hard just to talk about it. It's finding things that fit everybody is going to be near impossible. I'm excited for this year. And, you know, you guys talk about 2025. I'm a little apprehensive still because I'm worrying about like the residual layover effect from the strike. Will it carry into next year or is this truly the weaker year? Find out for sure. It's hard to say for sure. But I, if I had to bet my paycheck, it's, it would be that 2024 is the weak year. This is the the coming out of the coming out of it. And then 2025 is just going to be fucking go time. And in the 2026, it's just really going to be, I think, uh, a flood of great stuff. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get a Halloween movie this year, so it definitely is a down year. No, but we got an Exorcist movie that everybody was really disappointed in, so it's kind of the same thing, really, if you think about it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now that you've heard about our excitement for 2024. (laughs) Right, or lack thereof. (laughs) Fuck this year. I mean, if there's something that you have on your radar or something you're working on or something foreign that is coming our way in 2024 that we should be talking about, shoot us a message at our email. I like it, spookypod at gmail.com. Like and subscribe and listen wherever you get your podcasts. And we will see you in 2024. Oh, and thanks for coming, Jason. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) Thanks for shitting on all my movies. I just want to to remind you guys that it, it... It is 2024. By the time they hear this episode, it's going to be 2024. Oh, yeah, it is. The year of all things great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, seriously, he's right, though, Jason. Thanks for taking the time, man, to put all this stuff together. Brian and I did no work virtually. I did absolutely none. Brian did very little. You uh, put all this together, so thanks for doing that and, and coming on and being the lighthouse light beam into the dark <laughs> future of 2024 to let us know that it's going to continue to be a dark 2024. <laughs> this is a really uplifting episode. Oh, well, thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Even the outro is as <laughs> exciting as our outlook on 2024. Uh, hey, you know what? I wonder if uh, 2024 is going to be uh, a flood of indie projects that we can cover on Indie Spotlight. Oh, I hope. That'll be fun. Long live indie. Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Show some fucking respect for the dead, will ya?